What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and I've had a few of my subscribers reach out to me as of late and ask me if I can do a tutorial on photo retouching. So ask and you shall receive. Today we're going to be doing a portrait retouching workshop where I'll be sharing with you some of my own personal favorite tips and tricks for getting more out of your images in Photoshop. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how you can do some basic skin retouching in Photoshop. And all I'm going to do is open up a stock image here that I grabbed from Deposit Photos. But you can really use any image at all that you want to retouch. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of my original layer by pressing Command J on the keyboard. From there, I'm going to hold down Control and click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Alright, and let's just call this layer RT for a retouch. I'm going to double click on the background layer and name it Original. Now, the reason I'm creating a smart object here is so that I can double click to go inside of it and I can make a lot of my adjustments in here. All right, and you'll see why I'm doing that a little bit later. But once you're inside the smart object, go ahead and make two more copies of the layer. And I'm going to name the top layer texture and my middle layer blur. Okay, so this is basically uh, going to be like a frequency separation kind of approach where we basically want to take this middle layer and we're going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and blur it a little bit, maybe around 10 to 12, depending on your image. You don't want it to be completely blurry, but you also don't want to see too much detail in the skin. So maybe somewhere, again, 9.5 should do the trick. All right, then I'm going to turn back on my texture layer, come up to the image menu, choose Apply Image, and we need to change a couple of things here. So where it says Layer, you want to change this from Merge to Blur, and then we're also going to make sure that the blending mode is set to subtract. All right, and you're going to leave the scale set to 2 and offset to 128. And it basically looks like a, like a high pass filter has been applied to this image. So go ahead and hit OK. And then the next thing we have to do is change the blending mode of this texture layer to linear light. All right, from there, hold down the shift key and click on the blur layer so that you've got both layers selected. And then press command G on the keyboard um, just to put these together into a group folder. All right, I'm just going to call that skin. And now if I turn that layer on and off, you can see that it's basically no difference at all. Okay, but this is where the fun part, where the magic happens. So you want to zoom in a little bit here. And basically before we begin, I'm going to select my lasso tool and just make sure that I feather my edges a little bit. So for now, I'm going to set it to around 12 pixels, uh, which should be okay. And I'm going to start by just coming in here and the goal being to kind of even out some of these skin tones here. You see there's a few areas where it's just a little bit, you know, blotchy and bumpy and things like that. And uh, we're going to try to fix that. So I made a selection with my lasso tool and I'm going to come back to the filter menu and blur. And we're going to start to blur some of these smaller areas. Okay, so again, filter, blur. And you may want to play with the blur setting a little bit more here. Um, to just see the different kind of results that you get. You don't want it to be too high, um, but you also don't want it to be too low where there's there's nothing happening. Um, so somewhere in the middle um, to just kind of go over small sections at a time in order to start to even things out. And you know, this technique, it works really well, but you know, it's not going to fix everything. It just kind of gives us a good jumping off point for, for starting to fix the skin. Um, so this is a really useful technique if you are doing a lot of retouching, you know, a portrait or anything like that, either for yourself or for a friend or a client. Um, but, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, a few other things that you'll want to do here. All right. So again, I'm just kind of looking at the, the blur settings each time, addressing it individually each time that I apply the filter, as opposed to, you know, repeating it with the exact same setting every time. You know, in some areas, you'll probably notice it a little bit more than others. Um, but it, it really works well for areas like this um, that are just, you know, kind of uh, bumpy and, and uneven. It's going to help us get a more even and consistent look throughout our photo. And I've had, you know, a few people reach out and, and say that they wanted to uh, learn a little bit more about photo retouching and Photoshop. So um, that's part of the reason why I want to share this technique with you guys. It does get a little bit 
repetitive, so you kind of have to, you know, you get in a rhythm as you do it. Um, but, you know, just be, you know, patient and, and take your time with it as much as you can. And just know that, you know, it's all kind of building up towards a much better final result. All right, so again, I'm, I'm creating my selections. I'm going to do the same underneath the eyes here. And you should really notice it on the eyes. By applying this, you know, it's going to make it look a little bit more even and less um, kind of sunken. It will, you know, make the eyes look a little bit less sunken in and, uh, you know, help to diminish some of the wrinkles there. You don't want to get rid of them and obliterate them completely because then you'll end up with a face that just looks kind of unnatural, you know. And that's, to be honest, you know, that's one of the, uh, most common mistakes that people make when they're retouching is they will retouch something so far uh, to the point where the skin just looks like plastic. You know, it looks like like a mannequin. They've they've gotten rid of all the texture of the skin, and then it just looks kind of fake. So usually, when you're retouching, I think you know the goal should be to find something in the middle where um, you know it doesn't look super fake, but it also retain some of the original texture and that, that tactile feel that you get from, from pores in the skin and everything. So once we do this, um, you know, I'll show you guys the before and after just so you can kind of see what's happening here. So I'm going to just turn this folder on and off and you can see already the, our original and then what we have now. So there's still a few problems with this, but for the most part, you know, things are off to a good start. All right, you can continue to do this if you wish, or come to uh, the next step here where we're actually going to focus on covering up some of these blemishes. So now I'm moving from my blur layer to my texture layer, and I'm just gonna grab my clone stamp tool with an opacity of around 50%, and I have a pretty soft edge brush here. If you have a hard brush selected and you wanna toggle or change it, uh, just hold down the shift key and use your left bracket to make it soft, or your right bracket to make it more of a hard edge and you'll see that kind of uh, changing right before your eyes. So um, the last thing is that you want to make sure you have current layer selected up top. Now the way that this works is you're going to kind of move your cursor over a good area of skin or skin texture and then hold down the alt option key to sample it and then come down here and click on top of the area that you want to to cover or to fix. Right, and you can zoom in pretty far uh, to do this part. Change the size of your your brush as well, and you just want to cover up any other you know blemishes or things like that that we may have missed in the in the first pass. Right, and I usually like to sample from above and then move down, or from left to right. I usually try not to go you know from the bottom up. Um, it just kind of gives you a more natural looking result, I think. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes here going over this and trying to uh, smooth out any remaining bumps or blemishes that he are here on the skin. Now you guys can see that we haven't smooth, smoothed out every little thing, um, but we've made some more progress here with the texture of the skin and getting rid of a lot of those little blemishes and, and pimples and things like that. And I just wanted to come back in here to do a little bit more work on the neck with the first step that we used by blurring on the middle layer here. Just to give it a little bit more uh, finesse and, and you know, you don't want to neglect any areas that you may have missed the first time. All right, and I'm just going to kind of alternate between doing this and kind of sampling until I can um, get this to a, a little bit better place before we move on. Nada es real. 
guys. So now you can see pretty much our, our finished product here um, with, with the frequency separation technique. Now, uh, as I turn off the before and after, you can see all those problematic areas and blemishes and imperfections that we've been able to correct. Um, so now what I'm going to do is press Command S to save it. And then I'm going to close this window because it is a smart object. So now when I come back into my main document, you'll see I still have my RT smart object layer and our original layer. So part of the reason why I wanted to create a smart object in the beginning is so that we can keep everything inside of this image. So I can double click and come back in here at any point uh, that I wanted to do a little bit more work on the skin. Um, otherwise, I can just now work in this main file here. So what I would like to do now is kind of a little bit of dodging and burning. So I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And then you'll be prompted with this little dialog box here that's going to ask you to name your layer. I'm just going to call it D and B for dodge and burn. Change the color to gray, change the, blo the mode to overlay, and then check off this box that says fill with overlay neutral color. So all that's doing is basically creating a new layer of 50% gray. And we won't be able to see any difference initially because it's, it's exactly right in the middle of our black and white spectrum. So now what happens is we can just use our brush at a low opacity. Again, maybe you know a soft brush, preferably around 20 to 30% opacity. And anytime we paint white now, we're going to be pulling out some highlights from the image or basically doing what we would do if we were dodging the image. All right, and if I use black, it's going to um, kind of, you know, enhance the shadows or make things look uh, a little bit more recessed in the image. All right, but you can, again, you know, kind of take your time with this and see how things look um, and kind of alternate back and forth between uh, the black and white. And you really want to try to use what information is already in the image. So by that, I mean, you know, go to areas that are already you know, have shadows and then just kind of enhance them and push them a little bit further. All right, and you can do that just by kind of going over it with, with black at a low opacity. All right, and it's good to zoom out sometimes and, and kind of check your work and see where things are headed. Um, but I usually like to do the, um, basically the burning is what we're doing with the black brush. I like to do that more on like folds and clothes and things like that and uh, shadow areas like a little bit here under the neck uh, just to give it a little bit more depth. Now as for the hair, I tend to go over this with the, the dodging or the white brush to bring out some more detail like you can see I'm doing here. Okay, and you can do the same thing on the eyebrows a little bit if you want to get a little more detail out of that. And it works pretty well and I'll just do a little bit here down on his piercing maybe a little bit of shadow just above it. And now if I zoom out and turn that layer on and off, you can see how the dodge and burn helps. All right, but because this is a smart object just below, one other great feature is that we can apply filters to this image uh, that we'll be able to adjust. That means they're non-destructive filters. So let me show you what I mean. Come up to the filter menu and choose sharpen, unsharp mask. And we're gonna sharpen this up a little bit. So. By default, you know, I kind of have these settings here, but you may want to play around with it just to kind of see uh, the kind of results that you can get. But something around here I think looks okay, and you can kind of check the preview on and off to see how that filter is affecting your image. But if I decide that I want to change this, um, you know, I don't have to undo or go back. I can simply click this arrow here on my smart object layer and then double click on the smart filter to come back and change the parameters later. So that's what I mean when I say it's non-destructive. None of the changes that you're making on a smart object are permanent. Okay, so from here, what I want to do is select both of these layers, my RT layer, hold down the shift key and select my D and B layer. I'm going to make a copy by pressing Command J and then Command E to merge them together. So we basically have a copy of those layers merged as one. Now, what I want to do from here is just zoom in a little bit and grab my clone stamp tool, which is just S on the keyboard. And I'm going to clone some of the background here to cover up some of these stray hairs. So this is another thing that you want to pay attention to whenever you're doing uh, some retouching, is to try and clean up any of these stray hairs that you're going to see in your image. 
right? And you may want to use a hard, a hard edge brush for this. Again, just hold down shift and then tap the right bracket a few times to uh, get a harder edged brush. And you don't have to get rid of all of the hairs because, you know, there, there will still be some. But any that just kind of, you know, stick out and look a little bit odd or anything glaring uh, that you may want to fix. And generally this occurs a little bit more on, uh, on women, I find, you know, with, with long hair. But um, there's a little bit of it happening here, too. So it gives us enough to, to work with that I can kind of demonstrate the, the technique. And in areas like here, you may not want to use a hard edge brush because you want to kind of make it, you know, blend with the softer edge that you have. Um, you know, where you can see parts of, of the image around the ear and the side of his head are a little bit softer. Right, and that's one other thing to, uh, to notice is that in photography, anytime you have, you know, an image, you're going to have um, what's called the depth of field, right? So you will have certain parts of your image that are more in focus than others. Like, for example, if you look at, you know, his shirt down here or the edge over here, it's a little bit blurred. So we want to emulate that a little bit in our photo, and you may wish to push it a little bit further. But let me show you how I would do that. I would press Command, Option, Shift, E to make a copy of all the layers that we have below. And then what I would do is just come up to the filter layer, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll set a blur setting of somewhere around, you know, five, between five and six, and then hit OK. And now what we can do is come down here to the layer mask option, but instead of clicking it to make a normal mask, I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key, and that's going to invert the mask. So instead of filling it with white, we are now filling it with black. So what that means is that, you know, with a, with a typical mask, the way it would work is if we painted black, we're going to be hiding certain areas of our image. But because we inverted it, we're now going to paint with white in order to bring in the areas that, of that image that we want to show. So basically anything that we want to blur now, we just kind of paint over it with white. And I'm just going to go over the edges a little bit more around the, the hair and the neck and things like that. So hopefully, you know, if I turn this on and off, you can kind of see, if you look around the edges, how that blur is affecting it. And now I will put all of these layers in a group folder. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click on this top merge layer. Then while holding the Shift key still, click on the RT Smart Object layer, and then press Command G to put them into a group folder. Now I'm just going to call this the same thing, RT, and turn it on and off so that you guys can see the before, our original image, and after. So there's a couple of ways that you guys can kind of start to do some retouching. I've given you a few really handy techniques from frequency separation to sharpening to using, you know, blurs for layer masks to play with the depth of field and also dodging and burning. So there's really a, a good amount of stuff that you can do here. We've brightened up the eyes. We've, you know, brought out detail in certain parts of the images like the hair, um, you know, and we've also corrected a lot of things and smoothed out the skin tones here. So um, I hope that you guys found this useful and I hope that it answered some of your retouching questions. Um, if you have any more comments or questions, uh, please leave them below. And if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Also, I would encourage you guys to sign up for our email list as we are currently doing something called the Design Better Contest. And that will give you guys the opportunity to do a Q&A and ask me any design related questions that you have. In addition, um, you can tell me any project that you're working on that you may feel stuck on or want some help with. And I'm going to be picking three to five people each month to help out on these projects in one of my videos. So I'll put the link for that below. It is the Design Better Contest. Um, check it out and let me know how I can help you design better. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.